Hello everybody, good morning, welcome back. Once again, I am in the ET5 Touring and on the way back to Shenzhen. It's gonna be a long, long drive ahead of me. And to help support this drive, I'm going to use Neo on Pilot Plus, NOP Plus, uh, for as much of it as I can. Just like on the way here to Yunnan, I used it as much as possible. On the way back, I'm gonna do the same. And in this video today, I'm gonna to test out NOP Plus on pretty windy mountain roads. It's still a highway, of course, but it's windy, mountainous, curvy, um, I would say more difficult conditions than just a you know a typical highway condition. And we're gonna see how it performs. Um, so we're gonna start right now. I push the button, and we're not quite ready. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Okay, it wasn't ready to go. Now it's ready to go. And we are activated in Neo on Pilot Plus. So here the speed limit is 120, and we're climbing up to 120. We're at 118 right now, and I guess it's gonna hold steady. Presumably because up ahead we have a little bit of a turn and we're going downhill. Um, but we're just gonna see how it goes. As we do that, there we go, slow down to 108. So as we do that, I'm gonna talk about uh, what I've noticed about NOP Plus over the course of the past week, how it's improved since uh, Neo Pilot on my EC6 on Gen 1 car and that sort of thing. So first of all, the biggest, biggest thing I've noticed is that it really, really maintains the lane a lot better, even compared to the ET7 uh, that I was driving in Europe when I was using that on the highway. A lot of the times it would kind of drift in the lane. As you can see, hopefully, as you can see as we go, you'll see that it pretty much maintains center of the lane, even around the curves. So that's much, much better than before. Another thing, especially with curves, is that it doesn't slow down as much. I remember making a video uh, on my EC6 a long time ago showing you guys that the the when it was on autopilot and there was a, tur a curve even on the highway it would slow down so very much and you know if the speed limit's 100 or 120 kilometers per hour it would slow down to like 60 so right now we have a challenging situation got a car on my left a car behind me and a truck going very slow in front of me so if it was me driving I probably could have merged but uh, the car was a little bit more cautious and then those cars passed so now we're we slowed down all the way to 51 there as we backed up against this truck and uh, so not quite as good as a human there but anyway as I was saying it used to be that you go around curves especially like a, on a highway situation like this where in China you have a lot of uh, hedges and things on the, the center divider of the highway so it can't really see around the turns so on the older car, like on a curve like this, even a very slight banked uh, curve right here to the left, it would slow down quite a bit. Uh, especially when I first got the car, it did improve over time. But right now it's maintaining 120 kilometers per hour, even on a slightly kind of blind curve uh, on the highway. So that's much, much better. That's one thing I've noticed. Another thing I've noticed is when you go to like a, a highway interchange, like when you, know, you go from one highway to the next, so you kind of have to exit the highway, but not, you know what I'm talking about, a highway interchange. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I'm sorry. But uh, usually they have like a big kind of, either like a loop kind of turn or just a big 90 degree kind of sloping turn. And previously also it would usually slow down to like 40 or 60. And understandable because in China those usually interchanges, even though they're usually wide open and smooth clear road and everything the speed limit in, the, in China on those highway kind of interchanges usually does go down to like 40 so it makes sense that the car would slow down to that kind of speed but at the same time like most people will blaze through those kind of interchanges at 60 or 80 kilometers per hour because they're, they are still basically highway and they're usually not you know very difficult driving situation um, but now I noticed when we, we do hit those exchanges, which we're not gonna do on the, on this drive, but I did notice that even if the speed limit is like 40 or, or 50, or I don't know what, what the actual speed limit is, it does kind of maintain the, the flow of traffic instead of slowing down super duper a lot, which uh, I don't know if that's 
the car doesn't recognize the speed limit on that little short exchange or if it, it's been programmed to ignore that because they usually don't have speed cameras on those sections anyway and it makes no sense for the speed to be so slow. I've never understood that. Um, but that's just how it is in China. I guess that's probably like the, the national regulations for highway uh, interchanges is they have to be a certain speed limit and it's always very, very slow no matter what the actual real world conditions are. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, I haven't, we haven't uh, had any binging and booping, no crazy noises. We haven't had um, any weaving in and out of the lane. I haven't had any interventions. I haven't had any phantom braking sessions yet. It's all been very, very smooth, as you can see. Um, so here, this is one condition that I want to talk about. When you come up on a car in front of you and the car uses the logic that it wants to overtake, we're going to see if this happens, if this car stays here. Nope, the car moved. So, okay. So once that car gets out of the lane, this car is going to start accelerating again. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to encounter that situation that I do want to... Oh, that guy almost merged into me. That I do want to share with you guys that I've noticed and my probably my one big complaint so far with NLP Plus is like if there is a car in front of me going slow and the lane next to me is open the car can see that the car in front of me is going slow like it'll but it'll maintain the speed like you know if the speed limit right now is 120 it'll maintain 120 all the way up until it gets pretty close to the truck or the car that's in front of me before it decides that it wants to change the lanes and overtake doesn't matter if I'm on the right lane or the left lane, the same situation will happen either way, um, which is kind of annoying. Like, as a human, you can think ahead, right? And I, th I would think the algorithm and the car should be able to think ahead as well. So, like, for me, if I see a truck, if I'm in the right lane, for example, and I see a truck up there going 80 and I'm going 120, and the lane to my left is clear, I'm not going to wait until I get right up to the truck and then change lanes. What I would do is I would change lanes well ahead of time, and then I can maintain my speed. But for, for the situations I've seen so far with NLP Plus, again, the, the car will drive all, right up to it and then slow down and then indicate and then change lanes, which is not exactly the best order of operations, in my opinion. So right now we're going 102, but the speed limit's 120. Again, on a, a, a long kind of sloping turn here. Um, it used to be it would go 60 or even 80 but now it's much, much better, but it still is not maintaining the actual speed limit. As we get out of the turn, you see it starts accelerating again. You know, it's safe. I'm not gonna complain about being safe if it doesn't think it can handle 120 around a big turn. That's fine. I don't mind, but probably it should be able to at least eventually. Right now on that turn, we maintain the speed and now we're slowing down again. Maintaining ourselves inside the lane pretty well, a little bit to the left, but it's okay. And I guess one other thing we should talk about while we're here is, I don't know if I've mentioned it yet, but uh, I've seen other YouTubers, European YouTubers, they've talked about how uh, autopilot in the Neo, it kind of the speed and the energy consumption like vary, it varies quite a lot, and they can feel it, and it makes them car sick. And I can't say I've ever really noticed that, but I, I certainly have been trying to pay attention to that if that happens in this car. And I haven't noticed that, I haven't felt that. If I watch like the consumption down here, the kilowatts, you know, right now it's hard to tell because we're on hills and turns and stuff. But even on like long straight highways, I haven't noticed it oscillating back and forth uh, extensively. I haven't felt it, I haven't seen it. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, just a problem in Europe or a problem with certain cars or if it's just people being nitpicky, but it's not something I've ever really noticed ever, to be honest with you. And even trying to pay attention to it, I cannot feel it or see it. Um, so, you know, everybody has their own kind of sensitivity level. It's funny because like I've complained many times about the green lights up here for the SOS and how at night it like really kind of like gives me a headache. And this one, it doesn't. I think it's maybe pushed back or maybe the seat's forward or, or maybe it's just not as bright, I'm not as sure but I haven't felt the need to cover that at all. But I know that like for me being, I guess, sensitive to light, I don't feel like I am, but for, for that light and shining in my eyes at night, I've been very sensitive to that previously on the ET7 and the EC6. 
Um, and most people, I've never seen anybody complain about that before. But So everybody has their own kind of sensitivities. Like so for some people, the energy slightly oscillating on autopilot maybe bothers them. For me, I don't even notice it. Uh, here, I'm going to indicate myself, sorry, and move over because somebody's coming up on my on my tail. And we're going to see now, I guess, when it's going to decide to go back to the left lane now that I switched to the right lane. So right now, it it's not necessarily um, understanding where the lane is because usually it should have a blue a blue line indicating the lane. That's why it's going so slow right now, I think. It's going 71. Interesting. So yeah, it had exited NOP plus and just had standard um, autopilot or, or uh, auto lane keep assist for a short brief time back there. I'm not sure why it didn't have the lane, um, but now it's back on NOP plus. And also the speed limit has increased for, you know, like when it was not in NOP plus, it had the max speed it was uh, indicating it would go was 80 and now it's back up to 120. Of course you can control the speed that you want it to go. Like, I can push this button right here to lower it or raise it. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? I was talking about, uh, yeah, everybody has their own sensitivities, that sort of thing. Um, anyway, so we've had one time where it's kind of kicked out NOP Plus so far on this past however long it's been, 10, 15 minutes. Um, but it didn't fully kick us out of autopilot. I haven't had to intervene at all, of course. And uh, it's maintaining the lane very well. It's all good. Um, yeah. So we're still in the right lane since I indicated it and moved us to the right lane. We're going to come up on a truck over here. It could very well be the situation I described earlier. Nope. This time it changed lanes early. Good. So that, that usually is the kind of situation where it comes up on the truck and then slows down and then moves over. But this time it seems to have thought about it ahead of time and moved over, which is great. So as you can see, NOP Plus has, is much improved, and as you can also see, it's very beautiful here in Sichuanbana. We have a tunnel right now, but beautiful rainforest all around. Actually, you guys might not know this, but Sichuanbana is the only place in China where you can find wild elephants, and uh, I didn't see any wild elephants. I've never seen any wild elephants the whole time I've ever spent in Sichuanbana. But uh, it lost it again. Oh, it's having trouble, guys. Having trouble. There we go. So, you know, not perfect, as you can see, in certain conditions on the curvy, windy mountain road. It may not exactly be able to follow perfectly. It didn't, it didn't crash. It didn't kick me out or anything. Uh, it just was having trouble finding the lane, but it just slowed down, and it still maintained the lane. And I put my hands on the wheel and made sure that it wouldn't drive me into the wall. So here we go. Let's see how it does. Come on, buddy. A little bit to the left. Oh, what is it doing? That's not good. So obviously not perfect. It was trying to move me to the right lane just there. Okay, come on, guy. Lane control detection in progress. Woo. Guys, don't trust the robots. Don't trust the robots. There we go. So yeah, I was saying Sichuanbana is the last place in China, or the only place in China where you can see wild elephants if you're lucky. Um, you can see sometimes in videos online where they're entering little villages and stealing sugar cane or whatever, so, or corn. Um, we also got monkeys down here. We also got uh, giant salamanders, I think, and red pandas. I saw some the other day. It's been a great trip. And I hope you've uh, enjoyed this trip so far with me on the autopilot in OP Plus on a curvy, windy, mountainous road. And I think that'll be about doing it. Um, maybe we'll do one more video on straighter highway and show you how it goes later. Um, 
can see it's not perfect, but hopefully it shall improve. Right now it's gonna speed up. We've got straight away. Come on. Come on. Very, very chill. I would have floored it right there if it was me instead of the robot. All right, so thanks for watching. Thanks for understanding NLP Plus a little bit. And I will see you guys and girls, women, children, everybody all around the world watching this video in the next one. Adios. Zaijin. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Sabadikap. Papa.